in this Northern Brewer video, a fun collaborative project with the University of Minnesota as we brew a four-way split batch featuring a potentially new naked barley variety from the university's barley breeding program. We'll show you the brew day, tell you a little bit about the program and what naked barley even is, share tasting notes from our group analysis, and discuss some interesting things we learned along the way about barley and barley breeding. Before we crack into it, if you're all about these videos of brew days and ingredient experiments, be sure to like this video, subscribe to Northern Brewers YouTube channel, and share it with anyone you think would appreciate it. Hey everyone, it's Chip Walton here at Northern Brewer HQ in Roseville, Minnesota with an in-depth look at a kind of eye-opening brewing project we were recently a part of. We were invited to it by Kevin Smith. He is the head of the barley breeding program at the University of Minnesota. This program is based on the school's St. Paul campus, and this is where they put all sorts of grains, not only barley, but things like winter wheat and oats, to the test and determine whether they will become commercially viable and can be released as a kind of fully available new variety to farmers and growers. It's one of few large programs in the country that does this kind of work with potentially new varieties. These include a variety of naked barley, which has not been released, but the U asked professional craft brewers and us here at Northern Brewer to brew with it and give our feedback. This is all part of a USDA grant researching multi-use organic naked barley. One of the challenges with farmers growing barley is that if they grow a barley and it doesn't quite meet the specs for malting, then it might only be good for animal feed, and then the price drops. But if it's malt worthy and thus brew worthy, that makes it much more valuable. So this was a very interesting project for us to be a part of both as home brewers and purveyors of and retailers of fine malt products. Before we get into the brewing experiment, you might be wondering what is a naked barley? Naked barley is simply barley with grains that thresh freely out of the husks or hulls found on normal covered barley. And why is it naked? In normal hulled barley, the outer parts of the barley flour or pails are glued to the grain as it develops. In naked barley, the gene that controls the production of that glue is mutated and so the pails are loosely wrapped around the grain so they fall off easily during threshing at harvest time. This particular naked barley candidate from the University of Minnesota is a variety of six row barley malted for this project by vertical malting in Crookston, Minnesota. As you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison with hulled or covered raw six row malt on the left and the naked malt kernels on the right, the naked variety certainly looks much different, sort of like a wheat berry, although not quite as plump with a distinct lack of chaff or husk material. We asked Kevin Smith for any input he might provide us to help us decide how to use this malt. He said that several craft brewers had already tried the Hollis malt either at 100% of the grist if they had a mash filter or in a blend with other covered malt. Hollis has more extract per pound of malt due to its lack of husk, meaning there's more starch containing kernels per pound of a brewer's grist. He also said that husk is anecdotally associated with off flavors. He's heard this criticism of six row in particular, which has a higher husk to kernel ratio than say two row malt. Also, six row varieties grow well here in the Midwest where we're located. So he thought it would be an interesting idea to do a blend of covered and naked six row as part of our analysis. Aside from brewing applications, Kevin mentioned that malt husk can accumulate mycotoxins when disease is present, so it is possible to reduce risks of contamination by intentionally losing the hull in the field. Finally, hullless barley also has food and feed uses, so it could be a multi-purpose barley giving farmers more options. With this information in hand, we headed into the Northern Brewer Brew Cave to develop a plan and recipe for testing the naked malt. Here's video from our brew day as I explain how we decided to set up our experiment. 
Of course, we aimed for identical conditions across all four brews for the sake of comparative analysis. We brewed 20 gallons of wort in total, two 10 gallon batches, each using 20 pounds of six row barley. One batch had a grist of 100% husked rar six row malt. One batch had a grist of 50% rar six row malt and 50% University of Minnesota naked barley. We mashed at 151 Fahrenheit for 60 minutes, followed by a 168 degree mash out temperature rest for 10 minutes. Ran that wort off to collect the same amount of wort in both brews. Brought the wort to a boil and hit it with equal proportions of cluster hops at 60 minutes and again at 10 minutes to target 18 IBU keeping the bitterness and hop flavor fairly neutral so it would be easy to assess differences between the malts. Once the wort was chilled, each batch was then split into two five gallon batches and oxygenated. One half of each batch was pitched with yeast starters of Imperial A07 flagship at a rate of one million cells per milliliter per degree Play-Doh and fermented as an ale. The other half was pitched with starters of Imperial L13 Global at a pitch rate of 1.75 million cells per milliliter per degree Play-Doh and fermented as a lager. So two lagers, two ales, 100% hold six row up against a 50-50 blend of hold and naked six row. Some brew day observations from our R&D brewer, Brad Siegel. Brad reported there were no discernible differences in outward brewing appearance as far as the mash, louder, or boil go. No stuck mashes or any other noticeable differences in brew day expectations when naked barley was used as 50% of the grist. Grist milling was normal apart from the noticeable visual lack of husk, and Brad noted that the blended version behaved just as one would expect from a batch utilizing 100% traditional hold six row barley malt. As far as extract yield, the version consisting of 50% naked barley did provide a higher extract yield compared to the batch using 100% hold six row barley, given equal weights of the barley and equal volumes of the finished wort. Here's a look at the numbers. For the 100% hold six row batch, first runnings gravity was 1070, Pre-boil gravity was 1046. The OG after boiling and chilling was 1050. Final gravity of the lager version was 1011, and the final gravity of the ale version was 1009. Compare that against the batch that was half hold and half naked barley. First runnings gravity was 1074. Pre-boil gravity was 1048. OG was 1052. FG of the lager version, 1012. Final gravity of the ale version, 1011. After taking these measurements into consideration, you can see that the version containing the naked barley did indeed contribute more extract yield to the wort in comparison to the 100% traditional hold version. Not a huge difference on our scale as homebrewers, but enough to make us think about what the benefit would be to a larger brewing operation as it relates to the cost of raw materials. Because remember, higher extract yield means less malt needed. Also, although the first runnings gravity was higher for the naked barley version, the pre-boil gravity did not see a linear increase in gravity as high as the 100% hold version, although still an overall higher number. This is likely due to the nature of the loudering and the runoff in the naked barley version being slightly impeded by the lack of husk matter acting as a filter bed, allowing for even more rinsing of the sugars. Despite this, the overall extract efficiency of the 50-50 naked batch was higher than the 100% hold batch. Now it was time for tasting notes. After the beers were fermented, conditioned, and carbonated, we invited a group of UM Barley Program staff students and field technicians to NBHQ for a group tasting and discussion. 
It was exciting to see the beers being well received by this group. And when we say splitting hairs here, we mean it. With such a basic and simple recipe, we didn't expect huge differences in flavor, aroma, mouthfeel, and that's just what we found. Only slight and subtle differences, but enough to get the group thinking and talking. Several of us felt that the two 50% naked barley versions did seem to have a richer malt character, sort of crackery, a little bit like a sweet yellow cake almost, whereas the 100% six row versions did have a bit of something else in the balance, maybe an astringency, maybe a bitterness, maybe kind of a combo of both, just not quite as clean, for lack of a better word, as far as the malt character was concerned. This might be explained by naked barley not having as much tannin and silicate from husk material, which sort of clears the way for the actual malt flavor to be uh, kind of come off as a little denser. However, at least one person did feel that they liked that slightly more tannic and dry mouthfeel of the 100% six row lager specifically uh, because it seemed kind of quote, more familiar to them from a beer drinker's perspective, which I thought was very interesting. And I, once they said that, I was like, oh yeah, I get that. I see it might be too clean, <laughs> depending how you like your lagers. Along those lines, another participant felt the aroma uh, between the ale versions was very similar, but the overall flavor seemed a bit weaker in the 100% six row ale. There was just kind of this more robust flavor character in the 50-50 ale. And of course, these beers aren't just malt. There are hops, there's yeast, there's fermentation characteristics to consider. Kevin Smith himself said he felt the difference between the malt bill was more noticeable between the two ales against each other than it was in the two lagers against each other, suggesting that the yeast strain and the beer style in this case might have been a bigger differentiator than the malt itself. In the end, when everyone was asked to choose an overall favorite, more people at the table did say they preferred either the 50% naked ale or the 50% naked lager. Fewer people chose either of the 100% six row versions. Beyond the flavor, there was some discussion of the appearance and the clarity of our beers. Brad said he thought this malt could help produce clearer beer because a lot of polyphenols and things that cause haze in beer are actually present in the malt husk. And without that malt husk, it's easier to clear the beer, which for craft breweries, again, might help cut costs because they wouldn't have to use as much filter media or fining agents to make the beer as clear as they would had it been hazy because of the polyphenols from malt husk. Another interesting thing that we hadn't thought about because of the small scale of homebrewing is Kevin mentioned that some craft brewers he'd worked with were interested in the naked malt because it would yield less waste product. And when you're possibly paying someone to come haul away your spent grain and other byproduct, especially in a dense city area, that cost adds up pretty quickly. Again, these tasting notes are very much splitting hairs. And in the end, we talked more about the logistical benefits that a naked barley might have over some kind of mind blowing flavor component. Again, higher extract yield, less waste, things like that. When Kevin's team asked us if there were any specific beer styles or situations in which we thought this naked barley would be most useful, we had a couple of quick thoughts. We thought in any beer where the brewery values extract yield over unit weight of grist input, this could be due to factors such as available mash ton space or obviously cost concerns. For specific beer styles, we threw out a couple of things, including all malt light American lagers. As we all know, these beers can be difficult to brew because off flavors have nowhere to hide and a little bit less husky tannic flavor might actually be appreciated. Maybe a hazy IPA where you want to cut down on any astringency and let the malt support the pillowy body and the hops. Really, any beer where astringency or other husk-related off flavors are a concern. It meant a lot to us to have Kevin Smith's team come here to Northern Brewer HQ, invite us into this conversation, taste the beers that we brewed, 
Um, he, it also meant a lot to have him say that our experiment was unique and eye-opening and helpful to his team in a way that some of the pro brewers who got a chance to brew with this malt, they would run it through a one-off beer, which is all well and good and cool, but it doesn't really give it a side-by-side. -side. Our setup was a little bit more controlled uh, so that you could see the small and subtle differences for comparison and contrast uh, in the grist that we chose to use. Very cool, once again, to be invited to this at all and to have our feedback taken seriously from brew day function to sensory tasting notes. Um, we're actually going to keep the party going and continue working with the university and their barley breeding program, documenting a full season. We were just out there this week shooting video and talking with the team as they were planting the very brand new uh, trial plots, test plots of barley. Um, and we're gonna keep shooting with them through the growing season into harvest, into the lab, where they come up with, uh, where they do all the analysis on these varieties, because we think, like us, you home brewers and craft brewers are malt nerds and appreciate knowing the steps that a lot of these raw materials we all might even take for granted a little bit, um, how they get to where they are, how they find new varieties and decide that they are worthy of going into our mash ton. So stick with us, subscribe to Northern Brewers YouTube channel to see the ongoing series on that. And if you have any ideas for other ingredient experiments you would like to see, please let us know in the comments below and we'll see what we can get going in the brew cave. Until then, cheers, happy brewing, take care.